What's up, everyone? Welcome into Dodger Heads presented by DodgerBlue.com. My name is Jeff Spiegel, and this is your home for the 2020 World Series champion, Los Angeles Dodgers. Today, we're talking Corey Seager contracts, and more specifically, what does the massive extension that Fernando Tatis Jr. just signed yesterday mean for Corey Seager? This is a question that I know Dodger fans are wondering. I've had a handful of folks reach out and ask it. So if you missed the news yesterday... Fernando Tatis signed a 14-year contract extension, one that kicks in in 2022, I believe, worth $340 million. Now, again, this is a shortstop, one of the best players in baseball. That sounds a lot like Corey Seager, who's also a shortstop and one of the best players in baseball. So what does this mean for Seager? Well, let me throw a few things at you, and then I'll stick around for the end because I've got a contract projection for Seager that I'm curious to hear your thoughts on. The first thing you need to remember about this deal, Tatis was nowhere near free agency. He had three years of arbitration left where he would be making well under market value, right? So consider Mookie Betts. Mookie Betts made about $57 million in three years of arbitration, and that was with an MVP heading into the final years, two years. He also had two gold gloves heading into the first arbitration year. So my point of all this is to say, don't simply divide $340 million by 14 and say, well, this is what he's making a year because it's more complicated. If you want to get a more realistic number, maybe say Tatis would have earned $50 million over the first three years. Then you can say he's making $290 over the remaining 11, which basically is paying him $26 million a year through his age 36 season. Now, one other note about the average annual value that that the Padres, we have to consider. The Padres inherited an enormous amount of risk. They could not have only, uh, they not only could have had three below market years in his arbitration years, but they also had no risk. Every one of those years would have been a one-year deal, meaning a catastrophic injury or whatever, they're off the hook, no problem. Instead, they've bypassed those three one-year deals to sign a 14-year extension with no outs. So keep that in mind. The second thing, Tatis is younger than Seager. He's 22. This deal extends through his age 36 season. Seager is about to turn 27. He'll be 28 for the first year of any extension he signs. Now, because of the length of Tatis's contract, I don't know if age plays a massive role unless Seager is looking for a deal beyond eight seasons. Okay, third, Seager has an injury history, which could hurt him in long-term contract negotiations. Then again, so does Tatis. Tatis missed part of 2018 with a fractured thumb. And then in 19, he was he missed time due to a hamstring injury and a lower back injury. He did play all of the games in 2020. Fourth, maybe most importantly, and Dodger fans may not love to hear this, Tatis is a better player than Corey Seager. He's got a better reputation around the league, and he had more leverage. Tatis is a star in a city desperate for stars. Seager is, yes, arguably a top 10 or 15 player in all of baseball, but he's somewhere between the third and fifth best player on his own team. Tatis, six and a half wins above replacement over his first 143 career games as a 20 and 21-year-old. Corey Seager did have one season better than that. In 2016, he posted 6.9 wins above replacement. 2017, six wins above replacement, where where he was just 22 and 23. Unfortunately, he missed 136 games in 2018, 28 in 2019, and then had a COVID short in 2020. So over the last three years, he has played in just 212 games, posting 5.7 wins above replacement. And again, maybe there's personality bias going on here. Maybe it's projection-based. Maybe it's injury-based, but Corey Seager, no matter who you ask, is a notch below Fernando Tatis. Yesterday, we did a piece on MLB Network's top 10 players in baseball. Uh, They asked four folks to contribute. Tatis was ranked fifth, fifth, fourth, and third among all of Major League Baseball players. Seager made just one appearance on the four list, coming in at 10th. One final factor worth considering, supply and demand. Okay, Tatis signed this deal as the shortstop of the Padres. Next winter, when Corey Seager becomes a free agent, Francisco Lindor, Trevor Story, Carlos Correa, Javi Baez, all projected to be free agents. All five, including Seager, are among the best young shortstops in baseball. So the question is, does that drive up the price once the first guy signs? Does it drive down the price? Do some of those guys come to extensions beforehand? We'll see. So what's the verdict? If I had to guess, I think Seager's annual value will be higher than Tatis's technical number of $24 million. Um, I actually think it lands closer to the number I suggested above. If you kind of scrap the first three years of Tatis's deal and he's making about 26-ish million a year, my guess is that's where Corey Seager lands. If I had to put a number, I would guess he signs a contract somewhere in the ballpark of eight years, $210 million. That would take him through his age 35 season, which for a guy of his injury history is a risk. But if he puts up another year building off of the regular season and postseason he just had, I think every Dodger fan would love to see that. 
And again, even if most of those years are next to highly paid Mookie Betts, Walker Buehler, Cody Bellinger, if they all eventually get paid, the Dodgers could still offset the low cost, offset the cost of those guys with prospects that they continue to churn out. So can the Dodgers afford to keep any everybody? Do they like Seager more than the alternatives? Lots of questions still to be asked, but if you had to ask me, that's how the Tatis contract affects Seager. If I had to guess, Seager's looking for a deal eight years, $210 million, netting him about $26 million a year. What do you think? Do you think that's a fair deal? Do you think you would sign Corey Seager to it if you could? Let us know below. As always, stay tuned here at Dodger Blue 1958 on YouTube. Make sure you're subscribed and the notification bell is rung. Check us out on all your social media, Dodger Blue 1958 And we appreciate you joining us. We'll see you Monday night live for Dodger Heads. We've got some more great content coming this week. But as always, we're going to leave you with the words of Vince Gore. The best team holding a trophy high in the air. The Los Angeles Dodgers, champions of the baseball world.